In this video, learn why and how you can make friends as an INTJ. So first of all, why do you want to have friends as an INTJ? What's your goal? What's your plan? What's the purpose of having friends? Well, the truth is, you know, friends make great playmates. They can provide intellectual stimulation and exchange. They can give you uh, like a uh, juggling plank to throw out and toss out ideas. They'll provide a listening space to you if you need emotional support or validation or if you're going through a rough time. They'll be there to help you out. You know, friends can be there for you for different reasons and can fulfill different purposes. And all of the 16 personalities can help you as an INTJ with different things. So also learning to not just make friends but to make different friends for different purposes and learning to know who to engage for what. I think is key to having good and fruitful interactions with other people. Now many INTJs find it hard to make and maintain friendships and why is it hard for INTJs to make friendships? Well first of all I think INTJs are often misunderstood socially. INTJs can come off as a bit clumsy in social settings. Sometimes INTJs are accused of interrogating other people, asking too many questions too quickly. INTJs might put people on the spot to test them. Uh, asking questions about different difficult topics and getting other people to feel confused or uncertain or nervous. So INTJs can sometimes struggle with navigating the finer social uh, aspects of social relationships. Now the truth is, you know, as an INTJ, I think uh, it's important to have that base self-validation and self-acceptance to know that this is okay. First of all, I'm not here to tell you oh, you need to learn to be nicer, or oh, you need to learn to be less honest, and you need to learn to change your way of speaking so people will like you more. Uh, it's more about learning what people's boundaries and triggers are, because, you know, for example, you might find that some people are more sensitive to certain things, that people have certain triggers, that people have certain things that are difficult to them, and just knowing and respecting other people's boundaries is key. You can't know instinctively what another person is going to be okay with and not. And so what you can do is you can ask, hey, can I ask you a question about this? Or you could say something like, hey, I'm curious about this. Would you like to have a talk conversation about that? So as an INTJ, what's good to know is that everyone has a choice if they want to talk to you or not, and if they want to talk about that specific topic or not, and how they'd like to be spoken to. But uh, you should never feel guilty about accidentally breaking social norms or doing things you're not supposed to or doing something that people might think of as unnormal because that's just who you are and you're allowed to make and have your own social norms and social practices and uh, people cannot get mad at you for not knowing the rules if they never told you the rules in the first place. So understand and accept that part of yourself. You know, different groups have different norms and it's impossible to know all of the norms. In some ways, to make friends, you kind of have to lose social competence. And people with a very high sense of social competence will often find it hard to talk to people or to engage other people. They'll feel anxious about social interactions and they'll feel like it's difficult to navigate any topic because they have no idea what will trigger other people. And if you don't want to trigger anyone, or if you don't want to offend anyone, well, the only thing you can do is really be quiet, right? So. As an INTJ, it's completely fine to know that you know you can ask questions, you can say and do unexpected things, and you can be honest, and you can be clear about what you want, and that's completely fine. As long as you respect other people's right to do the same. And with that, I mean, other people might sometimes have opinions that you find to be stupid or <laughs> ignorant. People might think things that you don't think. People might hold to ideologies that you don't have. And one thing you're going to have to learn is that everyone can teach you something. You don't have to convert your friends to your political beliefs or to your opinions or to your lifestyle. You don't have to win anyone over. You don't have to sell the INTJ way of life or the INTJ rule book to everyone. You don't need everyone to believe in the rules and the practices that you believe in. You can accept that other people might think or feel differently about things just as long as they accept your right to do the same. And so, for example, if you enjoy political discussions with other people, but if you get to a point where another person says, hey, I don't want to talk about this anymore, or another person says, oh, I'm done with this conversation, you know, understand and respect that. Be like, okay, that's okay, that's fine. Like, uh, if you want to talk about it later, we can always talk about it another time. And if you don't want to, that's okay, you know. 
because you can't force anyone to be your friend or to <laughs> give you what you need. You can only hope that you know the other person enjoys hanging out with you. Now, a common question for INTJs, because INTJs can't read minds, can't know if other people like them or not, can't know if other people actually are on their side or is actually secretly against them, you know, like it's impossible for an INTJ, very difficult for an INTJ to really read people's feelings the way like an INFJ might. So the only thing you can do as an INTJ in those situations is, and this is kind of tricky, and it's certainly something a lot of INTJs feel anxious about, but it's trust. Trust that the other person wants to hang out with you and is genuinely enjoying your, their time with you. Trust that other people will tell you if they're upset about something. Trust that other people will set their own boundaries. Trust that other people are going to be honest with you if there's something that's bothering them. And try not to second guess it too much. You know, it's easy to seek validation and to say things like, hey, um, did I upset you? Did I do, was I too much? Did I say something I shouldn't have? Uh, but you can't really <laughs> uh, set boundaries for other people. Other people are going to have to learn to set boundaries for themselves. And if you do accidentally hurt somebody's feelings or do something, as long as you can own up to it and say, hey, I didn't know that was important to you and I'm sorry and I won't do it again. You know, like if you can do that, one thing, <laughs> that's the key thing that you need to know. And hopefully that's going to help you like maintain a friendship and maintain status quo because friendships they're really all about play. It's about being able to juggle with somebody else, being able to butt heads with somebody else, being able to have uh, conflicts and uh, disagreements and to have differences in a funny and accepting manner. And, you know, as an INTJ, you can control yourself and how you respond to it, but you can't control what other people do. So the only thing you got to do is really have fun with the situation and just accept the chaos and the mess and the weirdness and randomness that comes with having many different friends.